I'm now 67 years old and I intend to live a full and productive and happy life for a long time more, I hope, but certainly to enjoy every day. This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good morning, good morning, Mary Lennon. Previously, episode 1106 of the 12 Minute Convos podcast. It's been just three years, 15 days, 13 hours, and 45 minutes since we last recorded that conversation. Mary, that was then. This is now. How are you doing today? I am very well, thank you. What does it feel to look three years past? from then to now does it feel like that it, it does and it doesn't isn't it it's time such a funny thing some ways it feels like yesterday when we spoke and in other ways it feels like so much has happened since then so you are in cornwall uk still yes same place you've been there for quite a bit haven't you very long time yes it's, it's home i've grown roots here now i may go off and travel but i always come back home I saw that as well. I was checking out your blog. You were across in New Zealand, right? Just a couple months ago, right? Well, not even a couple months, a month ago, right? Yes, it was um, from the middle of November till the 6th of December, I think it was, something like that. Just three weeks I was away. Yes, it was wonderful. I saw a picture of the Alps, you flying over the Alps. Oh my, oh my. Oh my. Absolutely. Yeah, the Southern Alps are just as spectacular as the Swiss and French Alps are in Europe. And uh, just getting that glimpse as you fly across the coast through the clouds is stunning. It's wonderful. Now, when we first spoke and I asked which of your talents was responsible for us connecting, you said curiosity and connecting with people. For me, getting to know you virtually through Dieta Blossom what you do in the Facebook group by posting a picture, uh, pictures, right, every day that is in alignment with the card that you pull. And I have my pack, amazing audience of cards as well that have transformed my life. But would you say that tenacity has been a word that can describe how you've lived your life over the past decades? Yes, yes, absolutely is. It's being able to, to stick at something even when it doesn't always seem to be working at first and keeping going and, and sometimes knowing when's the right time to change what you're doing as well. I've had to face those moments as well, make that judgment between when sticking at it is the right thing and when doing something new is the right thing. I believe it's probably TV and hearing the British accent that makes you think that everything is easy and everything is simple but looking at your story where you're traveling, you're like a traveling saleswoman, right? Selling your products and everything isn't ideal. And the one thing that I believe you never capture on TV is how cool it is, <laughs> how cool it really is, right? Sometimes. How do you feel when you look back from now to then to see what you've accomplished and the storms you've weathered? Mm, um, I'm very proud of it because um, when we last spoke, so that was 2016, so I'd already been full-time self-employed for a year and a half by then. I'd, I'd started Dare to Blossom in 2003. Until 2015, I'd been employed in various roles as a business coach and, and trainer. Um, but when I've made redundant in 2015, which is the third time, then I decided just to focus on my own business and uh, and just do that and it's been up and down as you say there's lots of times where it seems really a struggle and times when things have flown flown smoothly I didn't mean to say flown but that was obviously the word that wanted to come out <laughs> <laughs> gone gone smoothly and business is always like that of course life is always like that whether you're in business or not and there's something about weathering those those storms and uh, you know you're speaking about the cold you know when I go out for my walks on the on the cliffs and the beaches here in Cornwall you know I wrap up warm and take clothes that will cope with the rain and then it's still a wonderful time to go out and about in nature whatever the weather is. Truly age doesn't matter I've heard many people and seen many people use the excuse of no uh, uh, that's past me or I'm too old for that you are the perfect 
representation of an individual's life and the fullness thereof. You understand that, don't you? The concept of we are here for this one life. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, one of the things I did in New Zealand, one of the prompts for the trip, actually, as well as visiting my family there, um, was to speak at the conference in Wellington. Um, and it's, it's called the Her Story Conference, um, run by a wonderful woman called Getrude Matsu. And um, it was about telling stories. And it was men as well as women. She makes a policy of inviting men too, because we all need to hear each other's stories in the way that you do as well. Um, and you know, my part of my introduction was that I'm now 67 years old and I intend to live a full and productive and happy life for a long time more, I hope, but certainly to enjoy every day that I do have left because none of us know how long we have, whatever age we are. Mm -hmm. Is that a conversation that happens regularly, the conversation of death and the possibility of it? Or is it something that just sits on the back shelf? Um, I'm not sure, really, to be honest, when you ask that question. And I, I think about what might happen afterwards because I have a, a strong spiritual connection and I believe that you know, our spirit or whatever you would feel it is doesn't die. That an energy that was us carries on and maybe becomes something else. So I'm not afraid of death in that way. Um, I don't particularly want to leave this body I'm living in at the moment just yet because I know I've got lots more to offer and lots more to do. And so sometimes it does arise in conversation. I think the conversations are more about focusing on the present, with that in the background, but focusing on the present and being who we can truly be in each moment of the day and aspiring to bring our gifts to the world while we can. In the midst of everything that you're doing, you are married. And not just married, I'm guessing now it's either 43 or 44 years, right? Yes, yes. I always have to work it out. <laughs> 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 It'll be 43 this, this year, this April, to my dear mm. husband day. I think I read that he's an entrepreneur. How has he been affected by the decisions you've made in your life? Oh, good question. Um, we've always supported each other, but we aren't particularly involved in each other's businesses. So we're very different characters, and maybe that's why we've stayed together so long, because we're so different and we both learn from each other once you learn how to accommodate that those differences um but yes he's always been an entrepreneur and you know part of the time part of the reason i was employed was to support us as a family so the two of us and our cats that we feel we're a family um that's probably why i became employed because at that time we needed a, a steady income but when i decided to return to being an entrepreneur myself he fully supported me in that too so it's we always supported each other's decisions and discussed them and offered our own opinions sometimes we don't always agree obviously it's, married couples never do but we agree to disagree at times as well the power within now that you've worked with so many individuals uh with the cards right the rediscovery sessions is it something that you can see before you begin working with the person or is it just like for them a rediscovery sometimes a discovery is it also one for you thinking through that question a moment uh, it's Yes, I mean, whenever I'm talking to somebody, the things they say prompt my own reflections and my own thoughts, which sometimes I offer to them and sometimes that's not meant for them at that time. So, yes, it's always a two-way process, I think. And I learn so much from people I work with, and I know I have lots to offer them. I think that was answering your question. I got a little bit lost in the middle there. <laughs> yeah, you're good, yeah. I love the honesty. Oh, it's like, hey, Angel, ask that question again. Is that two parts? Is there three parts to that question? <laughs> that was good. So your mother as well was a major part of what you became in terms of the strength that she held. There are so many women that you touch now within the Facebook group, right? How important is it uh, for us as individuals to gather in groups similar like those that you have to help us on our daily walk? Well, I think it's vital. I think that's what human beings are made for. If you like, they're made for that connection with others and the sharing and the joy and the love that comes from that and the knowing that we're not alone. In the very beginning part of my journey into this sort of work was um, as I would have told you before probably when I, in 1994 I was diagnosed with cervical cancer 
And the first thing I wanted to do was to speak to other women who'd had that experience. And there wasn't really a way in those days. The internet wasn't so advanced as it is now. And there weren't all these easy connections. So the first real part of my true recovery after the treatment was to collect together women's stories and publish it as a book, which I did in 1998. And that gave me a huge gift of knowing I wasn't alone and knowing that other people were experiencing things in the way that I was as well. It's beautiful how that works. I remember you sharing your earliest childhood memory when your mother gave you her son, your brother, newborn, coming home from the hospital, fresh newborn child, and allows you to hold him. And again, I believe it's that you're not alone comfort that vibration that you emit that then helps so many other people from a child to today to see you walk in your elements is very powerful so i am so honored to have the opportunity to speak with you and i am thankful for the inspiration you've placed in my life and i am motivated by all that you do, Mary, because you seem to never give up. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. In closing, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Yes, there is actually. Um, there's a, a new book I'm just bringing out, and it grew out of a lot of work I've done over the last few years, but partly out of the conference in New Zealand. And the title of the book and the title of my talk there is the the powerful voice of the quiet ones hmm. and the, the subtitle is reflections on an introvert's life because i am an introvert and people now may not believe that because i do interviews like this i go out and speak on stage i do all sorts of things but i found a way to connect with my powerful voice in a way that is comfortable for me and then i know it helps other people so that is still on the edges of publication i'm still waiting for a proof copy to arrive so I can make sure it's all correct before I open pre-orders for the book. And that's the next thing coming up. And there's another one in the pipeline as well. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, sign me up. I want my copy, right? Definitely. <laughs> and of course, to share with those that are listening. Again, Mary, it is a pleasure I treasure. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. This podcast is produced by Pod Edits. Visit podedits.com for professional podcast publishing.